In this video, I'm going to show you how to generate your own app using Bubble's new AI MVP generator. This is a new feature that Bubble recently introduced and that they've been working very hard on to let you go from zero to one by generating your app or piece of software using AI, but paired with Bubble's no-code design interface. So I'm currently in my Bubble dashboard. So we are an agency, so we have a slightly different dashboard layout to what you might use when you first sign up. So we have things like agency profiles, lead generation, that kind of thing. So you can ignore all of that for now. But in your Bubble account, you'll see any Bubble app projects that you've already created. And then over the right hand side here in this account that we have, uh, we can see we've got 62 Bubble projects. Now over the right hand side, we will see we have the create with AI button. If we click that, we can see we've got two options. We've got web app and we've got mobile app. Now Bubble recently released its mobile native app builder for building mobile apps, but it's currently not compatible with the AI generator. Hopefully, as they say, that's coming soon. Um, so we're just going to choose web app. And then we get prompted to choose a plan. But for now, we can just activate the free trial for the project. Just make sure if you have no intention of actually using it, you uh, cancel that free trial. Um, if you have a credit card linked to your Bubble account, otherwise it will charge you at the end of that trial. Give it a few seconds to load. And then we're presented with our prompt builder. So Bubble has a really handy prompt guide. If you click that, it will provide you some information about what to include. So things like the app type and purpose, what kind of app is it and what problem does it solve? Who are your target users? What are the core features and its visual style? Now. This also just relates to when you're thinking about building a product, whether you use AI or not, uh, you should really understand these areas of your project to be able to articulate it to a development agency or to freelancers or even just yourself when you're thinking about the direction you want to take your product in. Um, you need to understand what type of app it is, what the problem it's solving is and uh, who's it for at the end of the day. Because if you don't know those, you're going to be moving in all sorts of directions and uh, it's going to be very difficult to build something successful. So we've got some really nice examples here. So the task management app example, a productivity app for small teams to track project tasks and deadlines. Team members can create tasks, assign them to colleagues, set due dates and mark completion. Clean minimalist design with blue and white colors or local restaurant finder, a discovery app for food lovers to find nearby restaurants and read reviews. Users can search by cuisine type, view restaurant details, see ratings and save favorites. Modern design with warm colors and food photography. So I'm going to copy this example. Head back over, I'm going to paste that in. And obviously that is just example. So you would use your own uh, app prompt, but just for the purpose of the demo, I'll show you using the example. So if I then click generate blueprint, and then the first step in generating the app is to put together a blueprint for you. So this is where it will try and almost read back and give you a outline of what the app will be. So we've got key features, restaurant discovery and search, view restaurant details, manage favorite restaurants and read and submit reviews. Now we can refine this further if we wanted to. So we could even say add the ability to uh, share, share restaurants with friends using a share button and then bubbles AI will analyze the input and then it will update our foodie finder app so it's just given it a placeholder name and we can see here we've got the same as we did before and then our new feature share restaurants with friends and then we can click generate in just a second. Now, before we do that, it's important to also note that Bubble as an ecosystem has many, many integrations and plugins in its plugin marketplace. And it also supports third party APIs. So you can connect up uh, third party systems, CRMs, OpenAI, whatever it may be. Now that isn't currently supported in the AI generation. So you can't tell Bubble to connect your app to Stripe or connect it to ChatGPT, for example, as part of the AI process. You can do it later, so it's generated the first version for you, but you just can't use that in the prompting interface at this current time. So once we're happy, we'll click generate and then it's going to start creating our app. So this can take anywhere from sort of two minutes up to about 10 minutes in our testing. It reads over the blueprint and then it starts to put everything together for you, including the database, the workflows. Uh, hopefully it should put some privacy rules in there for you as well. Um, and obviously all of the user interface design, color scheme, everything like that. So what I'll do is I won't make you wait for the full five, seven minutes on this one. Uh, so we'll cut to the app being ready in just a second. Okay, so we have our newly generated 
application that Bubble has created for us. So once it's ready, it will take you to the index page in Bubble. And if we click on the page manager up the top left, we can see we've got the index generated, favorites, restaurant details, reviews, share and reset password and a 404 page all created and styled for us if we close that off now it depends on the application in most cases when we're building apps for our clients we'd actually want to prioritize having speed of navigation so we might actually combine the uh, restaurant details page with the reviews page with the favorites page and then have it as a single page web app um, and use url query strings which is little question marks and then values in the url to hide and show different sub pages within that main page and that way you don't need to navigate to each page separately it's all there to load once and then it can essentially be instantaneous navigation so if you click favorites it would go straight to favorites instantly without having to wait for a new page to load but the ai generator doesn't do that um, so we have everything as set pages, which is absolutely fine. It just uh, is a little performance thing that we do for our clients. So what we can do is we can scroll through and see what Bubble has generated. So we've got a nice navigation menu. We've got a hero. We've got the uh, find restaurants near you, recommended restaurants, and then a footer as well. So before we make any changes, we can just click on the preview button, preview that in normal mode, and then Bubble will always put the little debugger uh, at the bottom so we can just delete the debug underscore mode equals true or we can set it to false either way it works and that will turn off the debugger we can see what we have here so we've got foodie finder we've got a nice little icon and the name we can scroll down we've got view details we've got a nice hover state you can see the background colors changes slightly on that button and we've also got the heart icon so we can scroll down and we can see all of our different restaurants and we can see our footer at the bottom. We've got a logout button up here. We've got share, reviews, favorites, discover. So let's see what happens if we click discover. Okay, that takes us to the homepage. Let's have a look at restaurants. It takes us to restaurant details. Okay, so this is a little area where there might be bugs. Um, so the AI has created a page called restaurant details and it's added it to the navigation menu. But what it hasn't done is considered that this is a page that doesn't need to be added to navigation because there's no data being passed to it. So I bet if we click on one of these, it's gonna take us through to the restaurant details page, but it doesn't actually send the restaurant details through. So the AI generator is great for kind of getting an initial framework up, but it will have bugs and issues where it's not um, passing data through or it's adding things in navigation that shouldn't be there. And that's just a caveat of AI generated content. Um, and the bubble AI generator is still new. So you have to give it time and it will improve. So if we click on favorites, let's see what happens there. So we've got a nice, my favorite restaurants page. Okay. And it looks like if you click on the little icon here, it will remove uh, a favorite, which is very cool. Yep. Okay. And then reviews, let's see what that does. Okay, but then we can see we've got a nice review page here to read reviews. We can write a new review. Let's see. Oh, yeah. So we've actually got things like pop-ups as well created, which is really cool. Um, so we can select a restaurant. It looks like it's not pulling through the actual live list of restaurants, um, but we can always update that later. And then rating, so one through to five, which is nice. And then we can publish a review. I can also see if I zoom in, the text, the placeholder text is white on a white background. So that's, again, a little bug, a little issue there that we can iron out. Cancel that. And then let's see what the share button does. If we share the restaurant. And we actually get some nice share functionality here as well. So great. On the whole, pretty good. Obviously, this wouldn't be ready for uh, production by any means, but it's a good head start for generating kind of a concept of an app. See if we hit log out, see if that actually logs us out. It does. So we've got authentication built in. We've got login, sign up, navigate between the two, which is very cool. We go back to the discover page. Let's see if this works. So if I say I highly doubt this will work out of the box, but we can try. So, okay. So location doesn't actually work, but the cuisine type does. So we can see here we've got Indian cuisine, French cuisine, and it will filter by that particular cuisine, which is pretty great for just a little prompt. So if we jump back into our bubble editor, we can take a look at the back end. So obviously we've got all the pages here, which we can edit at any time. Now, if we go to workflows, we can see the workflows that Bubble has generated for us. So when the sign in button is clicked, it will log the user in and it also sets up a lot of the data mapping as well. So within that pop-up, if we hover and then go to reveal element, it will show us that button. We've got the email and password inputs here. 
and we can see here that it puts that into the login action which is really great and then we might want to do a little bit of cleanup so we can see here that we've got a white placeholder so if we just change that maybe to black that's going to fix that. So there's always going to be little tweaks and changes that we can make um, outside of what the AI provides us, but it does give a nice head start. If we go to data, so this is your database in a bubble app. Data types are all of your different database tables. So we've got user with privacy rules applied, which is great. And then the bubble AI seems to be quite intelligent in this case where it's it knows that reviews need to be publicly visible. The restaurants need to be publicly visible, the favorite, uh, favorites need to be publicly visible actually they don't in this case and we would probably want to change that up but it's not a particularly sensitive amount of information it's just added dates a restaurant and then a user um, however any any data that doesn't need to be public we always like to um, secure and lock down with privacy rules and then we've got our bubble generated assets which is just going to be for like the logo and other supporting assets that they've provided if we go to privacy rules we can see here Bubble has automatically set up some privacy rules for us on the user type, which is going to contain the most sensitive data. That's going to have the user's email, first name, last name, etc., depending on the scope of your project. And it's locked it down by removing all fields from public view. So that means someone can't pull out all of the user database uh, from the app. And then it's set up a privacy rule for user's own data, which is if this user is the current user, i.e. the user's data that we're trying to access is my own data, then it grants access. For the favorite, I might also define a rule to tighten this up and just say my favorites, uncheck view all fields, uncheck find this in searches and view attached files. And then I might say the rule is when this favorites creator is current user, then it will provide it. Or I could also say, because I can see Bubble has matched this, it's added a user field. So when this favorites user is the current user, we can pull it from that. Now it just depends, because if we if we deleted this field, then we would need to use the creator, for example. So that's just a quick run through on the database. And then if we go to app data, we can see the database content of our app. So if we go to all users, we can see it's generated some dummy users for us. If we go to all reviews, we can see there's some dummy reviews, which is great. If we look at all restaurants, we can see all the restaurants that it's added in. So we've got the Fusion Thai. If we edit that, we can see the image gallery, rating, cuisine type, name, which is pretty cool. And then favorites, we can see any users linked to the favorites. So on the whole, a pretty good start for beginning an app. Now we wouldn't use this for our agency at present. We do everything from scratch. We design it from scratch, present it to the client, and then we build it from scratch. But if you're just getting started introducing yourself to the bubble ecosystem, then it's a fantastic way to get a head start and kind of understand the fundamentals of how bubble works. Um, and also, you know, potentially launch an MVP just to test the market. So it's a really, really powerful tool that bubble has uh, recently launched. They're continually working to improve it and make it better. So watch this space when it comes to AI within Bubble and within no code. So I think that brings us to the end of this video. So if you do have any comments, questions, please feel free to drop them in the comment section and uh, look forward to showing you other areas of the Bubble Editor, hopefully in the next videos. Thanks for watching. Take care.